All right, just coming off of Drink Champs, everybody thinks I'm a rapper now, not because I have all the bling. Uh, clearly, I'm wearing Zara and I'm very much zen. But this, this person on the show today is the only rapper, and all of you female rappers out there who I keep giving love to, posting y'all late night phone calls that show me all that love privately, y'all ain't put me in a rap song, um, but she did. We here to yeah, get it on queen of the night. stop, let's get it. Hey, look, look, everything big except my body count. Still spinning rap game money. Bitches talking about. Told y'all I'm the biggest statistics and lyrics match my mouth. Mona Scott can't pay one bill in my four story house. This plain Jane is much. Y'all bitches passed around, bust down, ain't worth too much. This a skeleton AP, but me, I'm thick as How the hell I'm pescatarian in a lounge chalk truck? But that's okay. besides the fact. How you big but not the rest? How you big can't name a track? How you big can't hang a plaque? Bitches talking change, they CEO ball, but go off. Got it out the mud, so hell yeah, I'ma show off. Let's get him. Bitch, stop playing with my pen. I've been there since 16. The bitch mean I'm pulling rap like the vaccine y'all seen on the flat screen i'm a rap bitch bad dream right rapping scene plus the look bitch i'm a cash machine bitches taking shots but they to me got my doors unlocked in hollywood shout out to jason lee cut that glock and stay with me lotto but don't play with me he say i got a slick mouth and it get wetter on my knees strapped like some jabot jeans what's tea cause we could blow steam out of goodwill i let bitches have my old things my old planes look ain't feeling me. I'm in my prime. Amazon can't my delivery on God. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Come okay. on, man. Lotto ain't playing no games. <laughs> Big Lotto, baby. Come on, man. Ain't I? Big energy. Ain't I? It's the Ain't big I? leagues up here, man. It's the <laughs> LA Lakers. Yeah. She ain't come to f*** around. Nah, 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 Rappers, nah. you see what it is. Come on. That pen is serious. Come Don't on. play with it. Hey, thank you for coming through the show tonight, man. Thank you. Uh, Lotto. <laughs> Yo. Uh, I ain't gonna lie. Um, yeah. So in my house, we used to film in my house and my staff, they would play stuff on their phones. And I have this thing where I hate hearing people listening to Instagram videos. I uh -huh. just hate it. It just, it just drives me nuts. Yeah. So every room I go to, they're playing some rapping, rapper. I'm like, who the f is rapping? Uh -huh. And they're like, oh, it's Lotto. I'm like, I love Lotto, but can y'all turn up? <laughs> they're like, and she just said your name. I'm like, everybody turn it up. Yeah, turn it up. So I just wanted to say thank you. I, I appreciated that. Yeah. It was, I don't know why. I think I think I had just left the um, Cardi party where we met, mm -hmm. and it was just on my mind. Like I was just like, "Ooh, one, two equal three, four, five. You know what I mean? Yeah, but see, the thing I loved about it. Well, first of all, I have to tell you, I think a lot of people think I know everything about like the rappers of this era who are lit, and I'm not as tuned in because I'm I'm born in 1977. I know 80s, 90s, you know, 2000s. But uh, and and all my team, they're younger, so they they mm -hmm. would always say, you know, Lotto, she got bars, she got bars. Yeah. So when I heard that, and I dialed in. Of course, I loved hearing my name. But then I started listening to your music, going mm -hmm. online, looking at, um, you know, your your just your ability to deliver mm -hmm. lyrics. Mm -hmm. And I really started to see early on that. And I don't want to come off dissing anybody because people think everything I say is a diss. Yeah. You really are the most talented in your in this era of rap where you are right now. And, and it, it is not no shade because you put my name in a song. Mm -hmm. I think because it's either some girls are just, and guys are just trying too hard. Yeah. Uh, or other folks are getting more uh, appeal, commercial appeal because they're playing that commercial game. Mm -hmm. And I think you just got pure talent. Mm -hmm. Thank you, that means a lot. I've been, I've been rapping since eight years old. So it's like, you can't get rid of me. So, <laughs> so rap, you always knew you wanted to do that? Yeah, like I never played sports in school. I didn't do like extracurricular activities. Um, I never had a job. I really just- You never had a job? No. You never had a regular job? No. <laughs> this is it. I sound like privileged. <laughs> no, you sound like passionate. Yeah, I really, I really just knew I had a plan A and I'm a Capricorn. So it's like, it's gonna be that or it's gonna be nothing. I have to tell you, um, I love you so much, but Capricorns, y'all are evil. Now, I have to tell you, I'm not going to judge you. I wrote a book, and I'm going to give female you Female or male Capricorns? Male, cause, male. Okay, because it's Th there's different. A difference? It's different. Okay. It's different. I think male Capricorns got the, like, the conceitedness. We got the, like, confidence-ness. <laughs> <laughs> well, this guy was a homeless sexual, so he was a thief, a liar, and he oh stole from me. But... I mean, it was a really toxic situation. Yeah. I should stop blaming all Capricorns. Don't I think because do of you, I'll stop. Don't do 
<laughs> Whoever you is, look, don't give us, don't be out here giving us a bad rep. Yeah, I, I hope you're somewhere ruining somebody else's life. <laughs> okay, so you always knew you wanted to rap. Um, for some reason, I, I, I know you're, you're by way of from where you're originally from now in Atlanta, but somehow you give me like Bay Area vibe too. Really? Yeah, I don't know what that is. I don't know. Maybe it's the edge? Yeah. I, I love um, is the Bay. I know I'm trying to learn because I just refer to the whole Cali as so a, Northern LA. California, San Francisco, <laughs> Oakland, okay, San Jose. That's the Bay. That's the Bay. Oh, and Richmond, they go that's hard. That's not LA. That's a whole other culture. Oh, well, I don't think I've been there. Really? No. Oh, I think they would love you in the Bay. For real? Oh, absolutely. Okay, so you always knew you wanted to rap since A, never had a job. It, you never had a job because you didn't have to? Like, did you grow up in money? How, what was your early life like? So my mom, so my parents, they was, they from Ohio. They had me, I was born in Ohio. They had me, my mom was 15, so teen parents, high school, whatever. They graduated high school, moved to Atlanta. They didn't go to college, whatever. I come from just hustlers. Like, my daddy, he just a little, he a street <laughs> just make ends meet. Um, my mom, she just worked her way up in corporate, and they really just hustled. So I just watched them get it out the mud. Like we went from ramen noodles in the apartment to first house at 21 for them. 21, mm -hmm. two kids and cars like real fast. So I just watched them turn their whole life around, and I was just like, you know what? I come from hustlers. I need to be a hustler. No. So how did you hustle if you never had a job? Yeah. Because, I mean, I've had careers before this thing. Uh, and one of my jobs when I was 15, I was working in a pizza place, which it wasn't, I didn't like the job. It was just I needed money. And it wasn't even yeah. no money. How did you survive? What, 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 what was your hustle? Um, in elementary school, I sold candy. <laughs> I used to, and, and I'm from Clayton County. It was illegal in Clayton County, but my teachers was <laughs> with me. <laughs> my teachers used to be buying candy from me. Or they would, they would really extort me. They'd be like, give me, you know, da 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 every day, and I'll let you sell to the class. Mm -hmm. That Wait, in elementary you, you school. had to break them off to sell? Yes. No, yes, so they wouldn't snitch on me. Cause no, if the, the teachers, teachers wasn't pipping pip candy. <laughs> For real. They was like, give me, give me a pack of Oreos every day, and I got you. So, I, <laughs> so that in elementary, middle school. So by middle school, I'm starting to create a name for myself. So in middle school, I'm doing like $100 features, $200 features. Um, here and there, I might get paid for a show, $50, $100, whatever. High school, I started throwing parties, and I was um, charging like $10 a head. And at this time, sophomore year, junior year, I did the rap game. And then from there, I got better show prices and whatever, and it just... That. Like by the time I needed a job, I was already making money. So the rap game was in 2016, right? I can't even tell you. I know I was 16. Okay. No, so it couldn't have been no. 2016. So it was a while ago. Yeah. Well, either way, when you did that, was that the thing that really helped put you out there to where you could start raising your your price? The, the, yeah, the, the, yeah, for the, sure. Yesterday's price then was not the day's price. Oh, no. Okay. It went from, I mean, I wasn't making, you know, that money yet, but I won a good chunk of money when I won the rap game, like from the TV show, mm -hmm. that was like a prize. And then show price slowly increased. It really went up, cause you know the rap game, TV only lasts so long. Mm -hmm. Once that new season out, they ain't even stun you no more. So I did um, the Bitch From The South song and that's the song that made me like, okay, she we gonna take her serious as a rapper, not the, oh, cute kid from the TV show, you know. So we've had almost every female in rap on this show, with the exception of Nikki, the City Girls, and Megan. Mm -hmm. um, when you look at the, and Coyle Ray, who's now in the conversation, but now when you look at uh, the competitiveness of the rap game for female rap, mm -hmm. and I hate saying female rap versus male rap because it's I just know. rap. I know. It's crazy how they divide it. And then you just end up dividing it just by Even, default. Right. <laughs> so when you look at rap, do you look at your competition as the women, the men, or everybody? I swear, this is gonna sound so cliche, but I swear to God, I look at it as everybody. Like, mm -hmm. I be on everybody's head. Mm -hmm. Like, I be like, even at my own label, I be like, like, I ain't even gonna be messy, but the other day they told me da da da, so however many first week. So I was like, well, shit, I gotta do better than that, and it's not even a female. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I be on everybody's head. Like, I just, I'm competitive. Like, 
I, I had to keep saying I'm a Capricorn, but we really is competitive like that. Like we just business mentality. Like. So when you look at it, you don't because I always wonder um, because I know with a lot of the men, they are very competitive with each other, yeah. looking at who's dropping what, who's wearing yeah. what, who's doing this, who got uh -huh. the flies. Do you do that with the females at all? I mean, to it, I would be lying to say I don't at all. I'd be lying. But like, I really be fans of these girls. I really be a fan of these girls. Like, I be a fan first, and I be bumping their music when they drop too, and then I be like, oh, dang, yeah, I need to step it up. Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But first, I'll go listen as a fan. Mm -hmm. But I be lying to say I don't at all, nah. But you listen to it more of motivation than hating. Yeah, oh, for sure. Like, if I see somebody doing that shit, I go listen to it like, damn, she's snapping. I need to step my shit up. Like, yeah. So I remember when Cardi was um, editing WAP and uh, I, I, we got to the end and I saw you and Rosalia and mm -hmm. uh, Suki. What, what was that moment like? Because I know for her it was really important yeah. to share that space with you. And uh -huh. I mean, she single-handedly picked the folks and I know she's mm -hmm. a fan of yours. What did you think about that? I didn't think it was real. I'm not going to lie. Like, it was a lot of stuff going on at the time or whatever. And they was like, oh, by the way, um, Cardi wants you in her next video. I'm like... Y'all got an email from Cardi B team. Are y'all slow? That ain't from Cardi B team. Like somebody playing <laughs> tricks on y'all. You know how they be emailing like, yo, Instagram account suspended. Uh, they click this button yeah. and we don't get any shit. I'm thinking it's fake or whatever, but no, it really was real. And I just thought that really inspired me to be like, okay, one day when I'm in Cardi's shoes, I want to give that same impression on the girls coming up below me because she don't got to do that. Like mm -hmm. what, what, how do that benefit her? You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So I think that was real, like, humble of her, and it inspired me to be, like, you know, uplifting. Like, she don't have to do that. It's, it's, it's show her character outside of being a rapper, like, just a stand-up woman. So on your journey, have more people reached out or reached back or re pulled you up? Do you, and, and I, we could be honest here, because I, if yeah, people watching. Yeah, let's be honest. And, and, and let me say one thing, I want to mm -hmm. be very clear, like, this is not a gotcha show. Ain't yeah. no bait here. No, period. But, I'm, but your fans are watching, and, yeah. and you do have, because our fans are your fans. And let mm -hmm. me tell you, y'all thinking I'm being nice to Lotto because she put me in a song. Lotto <laughs> checked me in person. I'm going to tell y'all about it. <laughs> I did not check yes, you. Yes, you did. <laughs> I was walking through Cardi's party. You know, she real classy about it, you know. And I saw her. I was like, oh, my God, it's Lotto. And, and I went and said hi to her. And she was like, yo, y'all going to stop posting that on Hollywood a lot. I'm like, well, but so let's be clear. Um, no, uh, so there's no gotcha. But I, I, I always wonder because... When I talk to Cardi, we literally talk every single day. Mm -hmm. It's always about, I really like her wig. I really mm -hmm. like her shoes. Mm -hmm. I really like her boots. I, mm -hmm. In terms of everybody in the yeah. industry, it's always about, you know, looking and admiring what other people are doing and finding ways to put other women on. Mm -hmm. So I wonder with you, who clearly you're a star and you clearly have the star quality, if people are investing in helping you on your journey because my thought would be no. And then when you get there, mm -hmm. they all gonna be writing Yeah. I'm split on that question because I've gotten a lot of love, so I don't want to just like ignore that. Like um, Trina gave me my first feature, love Trina. you know, when, when I was independent and that's, that, was, that was crazy for me. I'm like, I'm, I'm not even signed, like what, for real? Do the guys, uh, I know I saw earlier a clip where you said, um, they playing around in the DMs. Which... Yeah, it's like, I ain't gonna lie, I've gotten discouraged with just the guys. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't even, I'm pretty much over there because that has just been like making me, like I'm 23 with gray hair, like, mm -hmm. <laughs> I cannot with them. I cannot, like, them, that's a whole different ballpark. I feel like the girls, at least we, we more fake about it. Like, we gonna act like we mm -hmm. you, you know what I'm saying? But the men, they gonna be like, nah, I ain't clearing it. Or, nah, I'm straight. Shotty, shotty ain't f like you know what I'm saying? Yeah, they be like disrespectful for real. Like the song, the um, the interview you seen, mm -hmm. the song. Like I was so frustrated because I was left at a point where it's like I have to turn in my album today. If I don't today, it was what two days ago. Oh, okay. yeah. So if I didn't put that song on there, I was gonna be missing out on a song that I wanted on my album. But on the flip side, I really wanted to say fuck it because you didn't try me. I don't want to. But did the song get cleared? Under stipulations and payments, unnecessary payments, yeah. But it'll be on there. Yeah. I'm going to dig in that album. I'm you gonna should. Go I'm going to go track by you track. Should. 
You should. I ain't even gonna lie. Like, I, I'm just. Why getting you just drop the name? Because you have so much class. That's the thing about you. You mm -hmm. don't respond to my DMs, by the way. I just have to tell you, and I know. No, you're not the first person that said it. <laughs> Trust me. I said, Cardi, DM Lotto right now and tell her to call me. No, but um, <laughs> why do you have so much grace, or why do you give so much grace and not drop the name? Um, I just don't. I don't want people to get confused in the fact like. I'm just speaking because I'm just one of the rare, real ones in the industry that gives a f to expose this. Sh I'm not trying to clout chase. I'm not trying to use nobody's name for album sales. You know how they like to twist sh and whatever. So I already see where the trolls can take this story, but that's not my intentions. My intentions is being a young female rapper in the game and exposing the stuff that people don't see that goes on. Y'all see the album and you see the album release party and you just like, oh yay. But, but you, you don't know, see the, the, the tears politics, yeah. and like the mental breakdowns and the frustrations when people is like taking advantage of you and these old white men at these labels is like not clearing shit and just taking advantage of young artists like that really pisses me off so bad i wish i could drop names but you know it's just for the for my better and for other people well, that's okay i'm gonna dig in your album and figure it out all right well is, it's a rapper or a singer i don't have no male singers on there okay <laughs> people would know but i'm just you know you know whatever so 23 you, you're a lot more solid and pulled together than i was at 23 where does that does that come from my own your own sense of responsibility to yourself or were you just raised right or a combination mm -hmm. of like knowing that you have a platform and people are watching you probably a combination of first being raised right like i grew up in a two-parent household they didn't play that <laughs> And then um, your parents are still together? No, they not. Okay. And then um, probably growing up in the industry, like I seen so much so early on, and I've been told no, and I done been, you know, let down by people I looked up to, and all type of stuff like that. So I think I just had to mature fast, like accept the world for what it is, and it's it's not uh, funny games. Mm. Okay, so there's only been one issue I've had with you your entire career. Uh -huh. When I first found Twitter, uh -huh. I used to burn Twitter down, and I used to be the leader of the Mulatto Mafia. That uh -huh. was literally what I would say on Twitter. For real? Mulatto Mafia, hashtag Mulatto Mafia. Now, uh -huh. mind you, they just came and killed me for my 10-year-old tweets. Oh, they probably did? Probably like a couple months. What's your uncle? I've been but canceled Twitter by Twitter was different then. It was different. I wish people could understand But that. when you came out as Mulatto, yeah. And that whole, because there was a while you were mulatto and there was no issue. Yeah. And then one day it was an issue. Yeah. And then the next day it was an issue, an yeah. issue. And then you addressed it and it was an issue. And then you talked about changing your name and then you dropped the moon and it's just lotto. Mm -hmm. Why'd you do that? A oh, combination of things. Um, for one, I never named myself. First, it was Miss Mulatto. Like when I first started rapping on the rap game, before the rap game, whatever, it was Miss Mulatto. Then I got older and I was like, ooh, Miss is like so childish. So then I was Mulatto. I'm growing up, I'm listening, you know, to social media. I'm seeing the stuff that's going on in the world. At the time, like when I'm getting dragged and stuff, it's like George Floyd. And uh, um, I, I marched in Atlanta, you know, police brutality, it's all these matters that's coming up. And I'm like, mm, that's probably not socially conscious of me. <laughs> so I was like, you know, I'm pretty much taking accountability for other people's Racism actions. or n negativity or whatever, yeah. Because I didn't name myself that, I feel like I'm taking accountability for other people's actions. I don't really know how to, how to say that. Mm -hmm. um, other people's actions or decisions for me. Um, basically writing other people's wrongs without bashing anyone, of course. But I just think that stuff just didn't really like align with what I stood for. I think people started turning it into a thing that I was bragging on the fact I was mixed. People turned it into a thing where I thought that was a personality trait. Hi, nice to meet you, I'm mixed. And okay. like, no, it's not that. So once you've been misunderstood so and many times- you can't times, even explain yourself with social media. Yeah, you cannot, you cannot. You're not gonna win. Even to this day, people be like, 
they they still gonna figure out a way, even though I didn't even name myself that. They're like, well, well, why did you stick with it? It's always gonna be a but mm-hmm. something. So I was just like, you know, all I can do from here on now is right my wrongs and move forward. But I don't think you did anything wrong. That's the thing. And yeah. and, and, and and you know, I understand like. I always say, uh, I said this on the Drink Champs, that freedom, I mean, ownership is real freedom. Like, I yeah. own my own shit. Whether you like me, you don't. Watch yeah. you don't. And I know when you're an artist and you have brand partnerships and all that, it's not, that's not necessarily what drives your decisions, but you mm-hmm. also want to be a good partner and just yeah. remove the conflict. Yeah. But I, I want to be clear. I don't think you did anything wrong. I get a lot of that, too, even from different, all types of different races. Um, even black people, mulatto people, they both tell me, like, I don't, I don't think, um, you know, anything was wrong with that to each his own. I, I personally, at first I didn't, I will say that I was hard headed. Then I started, I don't know. I feel like I started seeing a bigger picture and how it can be misinterpreted to the world. And then I started thinking people brought different stuff to my attention. So look at this. They was like, so when you win an award, this is coming from people that was actually fans of me. They was like, I want to see you win, but when you win your Grammy, if you have a white presenter and they say, to Mulatto, isn't that weird? And I was like, hmm. I just start thinking, you know what I'm saying? And thinking ahead and thinking like, do I really want to have this image of me globally? And do you want to constantly have to defend it or something? Yeah, and explain something that, Clearly, it's not being transferred. Like, the message is not being transferred how I want it to be, at least. So, it's not worth going to war about it. I don't feel that strongly about it. It's not like I wake up and brush my teeth and be like, I'm mixed. Like, (laughs) I don't. (laughs) So, Mariah Carey wrote a a memoir, and I read it, and then I called her. And it was the first time I had read a story as a mixed person, reading a story of somebody who'd gone through their experience being mixed. Mm Mm-hmm in a way of humanizing our experience, because I mm-hmm. think like when you're black and white, to black people sometimes you're never black enough, yeah. and to white people you and No, that part, I'm, you can't tell me I'm wrong about saying, yeah. because that's facts, that everybody has their own experiences in life, and that is something that I experienced, and mm-hmm. nobody can take that away from me. I definitely felt like on this side I wasn't black enough, on this side I'm not white enough, I don't fit in on this side, I don't fit on, where, where do that? I fit in? As a kid, hmm, I think I was just confused the majority of the time as a kid. Like, I was like, you know, where do I fit in? I don't think I dealt with it until I just understood that I don't have to fit in. I'm just me. It's not, you know, a race thing. It's just a me thing. Like, I can be me. And whoever accept me, accept me. When you're going through uh, the stuff you're going through as a new as a new artist, you're, you're not, not new now, but, you know, yeah. when you were coming up, and now moving up in your career, how do you decide who to surround yourself with? Because I've over the years, I've seen different artists or different celebrities be around the wrong people. Mm-hmm. And it'd be the people closest to you putting oh, yeah. the words in your ears that you mm-hmm. don't even realize are controlling you. Mm-hmm. Or how do you decide who you put around you and trust? The people that they see around me, like um, my friends that I do TikToks with and stuff like that, they're most likely on my glam team or I've known them since elementary school or middle school, high school. I've known them for a minute now. So I don't really, this is sounds so mean. Like I don't want to sound like a mean girl, but I don't really get into like making industry friends or like real, like I mean um, new friends. I keep my real friends around because I just, I feel like that has helped me in the long run. I avoid so many unnecessary issues when I don't link with people and they, Yikes, but they be in my DM like, let's link, let's take pictures. And I so be like, Meek I Mill ever know been in your DMs? Is. Who? Meek Mill. No. No. Trey Songz? I, I asked Meek Mill for a song. <laughs> 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 I asked Meek Mill for a song a while ago. I don't want nobody to date you. I don't want you to date none of it. Because yeah. these out here, I'm sitting here liking you like I want to protect you. Now, they ain't worth yeah. Not, yeah. not No disrespect to them, it's just... You know, like they know the blogs. We talk about y'all, mm-hmm. and we don't talk about them until yeah. they with y'all. Yeah, they know that. Yeah, do you know that? Oh, I know okay, that. I hope you know that. <laughs> I know that they be in the DMs for sure. <laughs> mm-hmm. You're never tempted to swipe back. I mean, because there has to be somebody you see who. There has to be somebody you see, who, like for example, if Kelly Obrey DM me. Today, I mean, I know he's engaged or married. I don't know, maybe he had a kid or something. But I, I would take, you know, I take one for the team. Yeah. There's never, you're, you're never tempted. 
Or are you, or is there just a rule that industry is off? Um, when I was younger, I'm not gonna lie, I got a thrill out of like seeing them in my DM, like, ooh. But I, I never like, <laughs> like, oh, I'm famous now. I'm lit. <laughs> yeah, I'm lit. <laughs> But then I just seen their intentions, like, okay, boom, you respond to the DM, then they say, what's your number, and y'all text, and the first thing is pull up. Like, what? No. So I just start seeing their intentions, and I'm like, yeah, no, mm -mm, I'm good on that. So as a young woman, 23, lit, beautiful, um, getting all this attention, because there's young women watching, you have a lot of women, I've watched the, your fans, the, a lot of women, the young women who are watching you that I think don't have that strength. And I think like mm -hmm. give themselves too soon to people who are just renting their space, mm -hmm. not necessarily looking as a way to move mm -hmm. in. Um, what do you say to them? Stay focused. I think it's like tunnel vision for a female in this game. It's way harder. Like don't get distracted by that. It's nothing, it's nothing good coming out of that. I promise you. Um, them like you said, they they know they know what that attachment is. They looking for the next young, fresh face in the industry. Ain't been touched by no industry yet. I'm gonna attach myself to her because I know where she finna go. And if she go, I go. Mm -hmm. Stay away from me. So when you look at um, uh, female rap in particular, going back to like the MC Light, Queen Latifah era, have you studied that era of rap music? I haven't studied it. I grew up listening to it and around it my daddy a hip-hop head for sure so like i by default i had to watch female cyphers growing up and be introduced he loved him some left eye child so <laughs> be introduced to every tlc video at six years old whenever i could start listening to music yeah for sure by default but like who touched me personally like who i studied when they came out was nikki mm -hmm. Nikki. And you've given her her props. And yeah. You're, you're, you're like in a weird place because you've been able to give her her props and be clear about it. Yeah. And also do the WAP video with Cardi and support her. Oh. And the fans, you know, the fans online say and do whatever they want. I really feel like the fans are the people that drive the conflict. <laughs> then you find yourself addressing the fans, then now you're in conflict. <laughs> and I, 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 ba I fell into the bait and now I'm just at an all out war. I, I fell into the bait. <laughs> I fell into the bait. Have you seen that? I did. I fell into the bait, and now they they took that and made it to where like you know now I'm attacking someone and I'm doing this on purpose and I'm it's all a part of a scheme to sell album and I'm like huh I just was a, you talk sh to me I was talking sh to you yeah. that's all I'm not it's not that deep all the time it's just we human still especially me baby I'm 23 years old I'm gonna get on your ass if you come in my mentions with that. <laughs> I'm going to still get on your ass, but yeah, that's that's crazy the shit that they do. But why do you think they just do it with women, though? Because it's been Nikki for so long. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they made they made us feel like it could only be one at a time. Mm -hmm. And now we're rewriting that story and it's a little different. Mm -hmm. It's uneasy. It makes it makes the industry feel like, oh, shit. These bitches coming. They done figured it out now. But isn't that a good thing, though? I mean, it's a good thing. <laughs> it's a good thing for us. Yeah. But it's like, why is it not clicking for y'all? Mm -hmm. It's great for us. Look how many female rappers is thriving right now mm -hmm. versus it being Nikki, Nikki and everybody else. Now it's it, we all, you know what I'm saying? For the most part, we well, are. I right think here. when it comes to your music, everybody's kind of in the same conversation. Yeah. It's not a us over them. I mean, it, it does take me back, you know, and I'm an old. So when I look at the people online commenting about rap now, I'm like, mm -hmm. yo, I come from the era of the Queen Latifahs and the Yo-Yos and the MC Lights and yeah. the Missies and the yeah. TLCs. Like, it was about women dominated, yeah. you know, hip hop um, in that era. And I feel like this is the resurgence of female rap. It's a great thing. But why, why can't it be a great thing? Right. I think, I really genuinely think because it was Nicki and everybody else for so long. And it's just, it makes people uneasy. Like, damn, they done figured it out. We thought we thought we had these bitches shut up. No. <laughs> Have you ever met Megan? Yeah, I actually met Megan right before she blew up at a South by Southwest show in Atlanta. And... Have I seen her? I don't think I've seen her I can I've see y'all getting along because y'all both have the same kind of vibe. For real? Yeah, she's just super chill and, you know, I've been, I've been on her ass too before. And, but mm -hmm. she, I kind of feel bad. I called her the other day and I just said, I, I was having a moment. I was in my feelings and I apologize. I said, I know sometimes 
you know, I, I'm a little harsh when mm. I get in my feelings. And she's just always been a nice person. But you guys give me, like, similar vibes. Who would yeah. you want to collaborate now with who you haven't? Um, I really, I really love all the girls so much. I did a record with the City Girls already. So, I mean, I would do another or another or another another. But I did that already. But I really, like... It sounds so cliche, and I got dragged for saying this before too. When I named all the girls I want to do a song with, and I named like literally every girl, for some reason that was a problem too. <laughs> so if I didn't say the names, it's oh she a hater. But then when I include everyone, it's like oh she just she just trying to get a feature. What? Can't win for losing. I can't win for losing. But I really love all the girls. I would love to do a song with Doja Cat. I would love to do a song with Cardi. I would love to do a song with Nicki. I've sent. I've sent Megan a song. I would love to do a song with Megan. So what male rapper do you think you can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with and beat in a freestyle? Hmm. I really think a lot of they ass. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think this is not fair. Like, the girls, we had to come with the bars and shit, and they like, oh, this song is trash. Where's the punchlines? da 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 but the males, they drop the same single mm -hmm. songs, but they don't have to go do the freestyles that we got to go do to prove. We can still rap, though. This is just a single. They don't have to do that. I really, I really, I mean, who y'all want me to come to the toe with? It's really nothing except the goats, because I ain't there yet. But, like, current, I'll go to toe to toe with any of the current. Wait, so when you did the um, freestyle with, uh, over at the L.A. Leakers, when you mm -hmm. dropped my name, a lot of people reposted that. Did you see that? that yeah. Did, that did well. Yeah, it did really good. I think it's, it's cool to see, you know, me get back in my element when I drop songs like Big Energy and stuff like that. People think like, oh, the label's taking over, or we know it, it's, it's becoming that fabricated process, but it's not. You can do both. Mm -hmm. I mean, so, you have to have commercial music exactly. so you can play it on the radio. Or, or otherwise, they're going to clown you for not being on the radio, not <laughs> being nominated, not winning awards. Can't you know what I'm saying? <laughs> exactly. That's, yeah. that's what it all boils down to. Like, I'm going to do, do me, and I'm going to go get the bag, but I'm going to still get on their ass every now and then. Now, of course I'm gay, but your body is so crazy. When you be doing really? these TikToks in your pajamas. And I be and my staff be post. I'm like, <laughs> we're gonna get taken down. Do you ever? Are you ever? Do you get so much attention from it? You have to. Yeah, no, I I really do. I, I'm trying to lose weight right now, though. Why? This this good food out here. <laughs> this good food out here. I got a man. We be later. Oh, you're you're not single. No. Wait. So you are. How long you been in a relationship? So and why yeah. the hell we don't know we don't know that Lotto's in a relationship? Mm -mm. I don't I don't like to speak on it. I just like uh 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 uh, uh. No, we miss this. For How real? we miss this? You no seriously. I just don't make it like a public thing. Like I'll tell people yeah da 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 because I got a man whatever. I just don't want want to make it a public thing. Like I feel like I have to expose so much in my life unwillingly already. Like I don't want to expose it. No no no. Wait, how long y'all been together? I'm not going to ask too many questions, but for a while. Two years, yeah. You've been in a relationship for two years? Mm hmm mm hmm While all these tri <laughs> was in your DMs, including the one on the album, who we going to find out when the track list drops? Crazy, right? Just totally disrespecting <laughs> black love. Okay, wait. So how does your man... It's a man. Mm hmm Okay. Are you straight, by Straight. Okay. So when your man sees you... Okay, two years. So in two years, you've had a lot happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Has he stayed secure and solid the whole way? Yeah, for sure. For sure. I think, I really don't think he going nowhere. Mm -hmm. He been there like when I'm at my worst, my lowest, like when I just cannot. And he helped me too. Like I think a lot of the times um, the industry try to paint it like it's a distraction to be in a relationship. My relationship has helped me behind the scenes and like, you know, in the actual industry. Like Emotionally? Emotionally, you know, like when I'm just over it, when I need advice and I need to know certain things that I didn't know, you know, he be there for me. Mm. Two years. Wait, I know, and, I'm so young. Wait, so you <laughs> yeah. Got, no, and you got all these diamonds, you're beautiful, the money's up, and he's still solid. So yeah. I'm not going to ask what he does, because mm -hmm. I could tell, I could tell <laughs> you, money. like, you don't like no nerd, so he's not a banker. You don't like no... Uh, He's a and he's, he, uh, anyway, I'm not going to go there. We'll talk about <laughs> All right, 
so, so um, you know, I, I love the fact that you said um, the industry will press you to believe you can't have both. Yeah. Because even between Cardi's first album cycle and the second, when she decided to have a second baby, yeah. there was a lot of pressure on get an album out, get an album, because the fans don't really, they want you to be a woman and yeah. manage it all, but they really mm -hmm. don't. They don't. And I think that's just the stigma for women. That's another reason why it's harder for a woman. A woman, um, these men have, some of these niggas be having multiple babies a year. Mm. <laughs> and they good to go. Well, they can drop them off and not come back. And they sure don't come back, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's great that you're being a good example for women, though. Yeah. Do you I really do love that about Cardi, though. She don't even know that's another reason why she um, has inspired me, because she just made me realize, like, I don't have to choose my career or me. You know, I can do both. Mm -hmm. That girl be busting it open, pregnant and all. Mm -hmm. Like award shows and shit. Uh, I was at the BT Awards when she came out and revealed the second baby mm -hmm. bump. I was like. Do you feel the pressure of fame yet? I do. Um, I try to just be me though. So I don't feel it 24-7. I feel like when you just try to be yourself and um, not get distracted by trying to be what the people want you to be or what the label wants you to be, it, it don't feel like pressure anymore. It feel like, oh, I'm just being me, you know? Mm -hmm. But it's, it's, it's inevitable to not feel the pressure. But. All right, so I know you've done reality TV, you've done the competition show. What about TV acting, film? I had a offer from a really big TV show right before the pandemic and I guess filming or whatever got messed up with that. Two years. But another one. Do you want to act on? I do though. I wouldn't do reality TV again, but I would do like scripted role in a movie, TV show, something like that, mm -hmm. I would. Well, I, I could see you on Power or... Um, yeah, right? like, yeah, like something like or a Or even boss. BMF, like something, yeah, you know? Yeah, you know what, BMF or um, Atlanta. Childish yeah. Gambino is bringing Atlanta back. I could do Atlanta. So too. you would do TV and film? Yeah. Um, who do you hate in the industry? <laughs> <laughs> Because, I mean, you're t I mean, you clearly get in the car some days and say, this Yeah. This bitch got me up. Mm, I hate the, <laughs> I hate a couple CEOs out there. Mm. Um, I feel like it's a... Your team is kind of giggling. Somebody must be playing you right now. I'm getting close to them. You know how when you was playing hide and seek as a kid, or was it hide and seek, hide and go find it, whatever, and you was getting closer and closer <laughs> and people start making noises? I, I, it's a couple CEOs. Mm, mm, mm. It's a couple CEOs and just like, I'm not going to get too specific about their roles in the industry, but it's a couple just old white men that think they can just come in and culture vulture this shit and steal from young artists and we not going for that and mm -hmm. I'm not going for that and they laughing because they know if you keep pushing me I'm a ticking time bomb and I'm going to expose your ass because nobody speaks on this I'll be the, I'll gladly be the first to speak mm -hmm. on it for sure our cameras are always ready to roll we can get to Atlanta I might have to come back we, I ain't no, gonna we'll lie come, we will come to Tap you Tap back in with me in about a week <laughs> after this album drop and I'll let you know so babies, do you want babies? Like, I do. That's why I was talking about the Cardi thing, because I want a baby soon, and a so lot of like, people. Soon, like how soon? Like, probably like two years, okay. a year, something like that. I think um, a lot of people just make me feel like that's not possible, but so many people, even um, Young Miami, she got two kids, like, mm -hmm. and she had a kid right in her prime. Well, we all and people think JT like, got one, but we ain't seen it I yet. I know, right? Mm -hmm. I just, not even to be messy, I want her to have a baby just to keep pushing this agenda that we can do both. You right. know what I'm saying? I'm going to help push that agenda. Well, look, they pressure Rihanna into having one. And now she, got, <laughs> you know what's crazy is at first, we used to see Rihanna pop out here and there, but Rihanna is outside now. Have you seen yeah. her? No, she outside. <laughs> she, she outside. outside. And she looks great. Yeah, she looks so good. It, it just, I don't know, as like a younger female in the industry, it feel good to see like them doing both. It's like, I can do that. I can do that. I mean, when I'm ready, I can do that. Mm. Well, listen, um, so you have the new song with, uh, with uh, 21 Savage. Yes. Let's talk about that. Willie. Willie, I recorded in 2020, the end of 2020. And um, 
when I had did the like feature, guess the facts about the feature TikTok, they um, they got mad or whatever, and somehow they leaked a version of the song. They thought they leaked the song. That's the version they leaked from 2020. Didn't like it. I didn't scrap it. I just put it in the tuck, like, oh, I might come back to it, whatever. This year, came back to it, rewrote it, rewrapped it, and I was like, mm, I do like this song now. I like this song now. And it just gave me, like, Atlanta strip club culture. And me and Savage got a song on my last album called Pull Up. And it had that same, like, sticky, choppy, catchy flow. So I sent it to him, and I was like, would you want to do this? And he was like, yeah. I'm torn. So Atlanta, I've been to Atlanta several times, of course. We, we film while and out there. Atlanta, really, as I've been going there more often, it really is a dope city. It is. Like, like you I can't... went to the hookah lounge. So I went to Pasha's. Have well, I'm about to say which hookah lounge, because every pa lounge got hookah. Have you been to Pasha's? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I go to Pasha's. Uh -huh. The food is good, the, the, the hookah's great. And, mm -hmm. then, and then I remember at one time I looked up and I said, damn, there's a lot of black people here. My boy looked at me and said, this is Atlanta. It was so many beautiful black people and it was all black. And we all pulling up in Bentley's, G-Wagons, yeah. lamb chops. That's we, just a different type of energy. Yes, it's, it make you want to go get it and it make you feel like you can go get it. Cause I know um, when I went, when I would be younger, like um, rap game days, I, we would go to like Detroit and do a uh, high school pep rally or like boom like them midwest like random like utah and stuff mm -hmm. like that and do these um high school pep rallies and we'll be talking to the kids or whatever and they just they would be like yeah i want to rap but i know i'm just gonna be a nurse and i'll be like wait why like i didn't realize how privileged i was growing up in atlanta having a dream like being a rapper or a model or a director or a photographer, dream jobs like that are way more obtainable mm -hmm. in Atlanta because it's just, that's the culture in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you, 112 or Jagged Edge? I'm gonna say Jagged Edge, maybe that has something to do with my age, but my favorite song ever is Good Luck Charm by Jagged Edge. I've never been a Jagged Edge fan. For People real? Are really, right, look at his face. Everybody's surprised. I, I've never gotten into Jagged Edge. Never. For real? 112. I was always a 112 fan. But yeah. Yeah, Jagged Edge, I don't know. Like, women just love Jagged Edge. Yeah. I don't know. It's something about that Jagged Edge, baby. We got it in Atlanta. We just got the sauce. Young Thug or Gunna? I'm, I love both music so much. I'm going to have to say Thug though. Mm. Thug, like, I've been listening to Thug since I was in like middle school, like way before probably y'all heard about Thug. Mm -hmm. And he shaped a lot of the culture, not even just for Atlanta, but hip hop, trap scene. Okay. Bow Wow or uh, Outcast? I know, I know. I had to throw some, I couldn't think of what to <laughs> Bow Wow's a legend in his he life. He is, he is. But now you know damn well if I it. chose Bow Wow, that was going to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely Outkast. I grew up on Outkast. Um, I remember, like, I have this memory. I need to ask my daddy about this. But I had this memory of being at Big Boy House as a little girl and, like, my daddy and him talking to us. Is your dad, he's in the industry, music? He not in, the, he not in music, like, way, way, way back in the day. He used to manage somebody that y'all would never know. Who? I don't even know old. the name. Sure? Like, he was never, like, he never made it. Okay. Or was it she? I don't, no, no, it was he. He was a rapper. Or was it a group? Something like that. He was, like, <laughs> fake managing or whatever. And just on the scene, like, cool with the rappers. And, like, he was into cars. So, like... Rappers would be like, oh, let me buy that car. He would be like, oh, let me buy that car. Oh, pull up to my video shoot. Put the car in the video shoot. Like, my daddy had cars in the Sierra video shoot, um, mm. goodies. He had cars in the ATL movie, stuff like that. And I would be on set with him. So I was exposed to that lifestyle early on, too. Well, listen, um, you always got a home over here. I, like yeah. I said, there's no, no... you playing. Now, if they keep pissing me off, I'm coming back. Lotto, let me tell you something. You know how you be spitting bars when you freestyling, how yeah. you just be killing them? That's what I do on the internet. We yeah. are a perfect partnership. I'm, I'm telling, telling you, you. All you got to do, I'll, I'll let... <laughs> do you drink or you don't drink? 
I do drink. Wait, maybe, wait, what you maybe drink? Maybe I lay out that good 1942 or that that, okay, that reposado. Yeah. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. after about three, four shots, a little girl. we turn their cameras on and burn <laughs> it down. No, because you know the thing I, I love that you're doing, because one, you're, you are giving people grace because you haven't dropped the name. Because yeah. once you assign a name to it, then it, it causes yeah. a different situation. Mm -hmm. But the second thing is you're showing young women that like you can be talented, mm -hmm. have passion, fight for your dream, and not have to f to get on. And, 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 and the men in the world of Me Too, and in the world where cancel culture is still a real thing, uh, you know, still don't give a f mm -hmm. and still are trying it because they mm -hmm. expect you to be quiet and mm -hmm. expect you not to sign the name And so it. many people have been quiet about it. I don't know if it's like scared of the cancel culture or like flipping, they love to flip the agenda back on us somehow. If we exposing like, the um, interview I did that you keep referring to, the where I was talking about the male feature, mm -hmm. I seen comments of them saying like I'm clout chasing. So I'm mm -hmm. like, okay, well maybe I really definitely don't need to say a name now. Maybe I should actually just shut up about it. But no, I'm not actually going right. to. Right, and shut you up don't about read it. the comments. I mean, you don't let the comments drive you to your decision making, though. I try not to. Mm -hmm. I try not to. I will be lying. Because you are one to respond. You do respond. Oh yeah. I'm trying to get back, because I was doing so good for so long, too. I was just out the way, la, 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 la. No, they done, come here. They done reeled me back in. But I'm trying to get back on my turn the cheek, be the bigger person. Vibes, it's not been working lately, but I'm going to figure it out. I mean, you're human. I think you should do what you feel. Yeah, like there's no right or wrong. It, you know, you're yeah. human, and I and I and I, I it's not fair that people want to take the you being a human away from you just because you become a star. We got that, and that's go that goes back to the relationship that I was talking about earlier. Is like I have to give up so much already. I'm gonna keep the things that I can keep to me. Mm -hmm. I'm keeping them to me. Mm -hmm. Oh, nigga, mad right now watching. Everybody, <laughs> everybody watch. They still gonna slide in your DM though. They is. That's the crazy they part. They is. They is. They don't give a f <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we got the jewelry, we got the beauty, we got the brains, we got the bling, and then we got the man. We got the single with 21 Savage, and now we got an album. Yeah. When's the album drop? Album is March 25th. Mm -hmm. It's called 777. Do you have a tattoo 777? I do. You, you picked oh, that. Oh, so the, yes. Well, yeah. yeah, I have to pay attention to everything, because yeah. you could have had a f face and Lee tattoo. <laughs> like, okay. okay, so Never. How, did you, what, how did you come with that name? Or that title? Yeah, 777 always just was important to me. It had meaning with me, seven God's number. And then um, in like school, my grandma, my dad, my mom, my sister, everybody's favorite number was seven. So at school, like when they would be like, oh, what's your favorite color? What's your favorite food? What's your favorite number? I'd be like, seven, like, because everybody I know, favorite number is seven. So I was really just copying them. So it was just like 777. But it became a part of my brand when I changed my name to Lotto in reference to the lottery mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and hitting the jackpot, 777, lucky number, good luck, good fortune, whatever, and then I tied it all in. And then that's just how I've been feeling lately in this new era and the, the, the new music, whatever. It's just like completion, growth, evolution, turning over a new leaf, next chapter, like leaving the negativity behind and just positivity now, like good fortune. That's mm. that's. That's tough time I'm on now. I love it. Well, listen, um, I'm glad you finally made it. Um, I was starting to give up. I said, she's not going to come. Because some people are afraid to come here. I don't know. I have yeah. this reputation that I'm messy. Yes, I have been messy. <laughs> but, you know, I, I'm trying to become better at what I do. You know, I, like you, coming in the game, a lot of people didn't respect me. So mm -hmm. I was like, yo, I'm going to knock these doors down yeah. by being on your asses. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. when they start acknowledging me, I'm like, okay, I can lighten up a little bit. Yeah. You know, but uh, <laughs> uh, I'm just so glad to finally, like, get to sit with you. And you mm -hmm. always can come here, so. Period. And then, now, now the show, when you ready to burn it up. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. bringing 10 bottles of 1942. <laughs> you bring your gang, I'll bring my gang, and we just going to hash it out. I got it. All right, cool. <laughs> like, make sure you follow and support everything Lotto does. And I want to just say that um, Cardi was here right when Bodak Yellow popped. And then she did what she did. And so when you blow up. Are we manifesting when energy When you blow up right bigger now? than you are now, because you're on your way, make sure you, you know, you stay, stay connected to us. For sure. I ain't, I ain't never going to Hollywood. I'm, I'm still that bitch from Clayco. Don't get it f***ed up.
<laughs> All right. Hey, Lottos, man, if you ever leak a photo, send it to me. Okay, bye.